Hello everybody, so I finally decided to pull the trigger and get the new DJI running RS2. Uh, hopefully I'm not too late to the party, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, this is not great for the original running S that I have, and this was supposed to be a little lighter, and it's supposed to have multiple features that the other one didn't have, so. Okay, let's open it up and see what's in the box. The first thing you're gonna find is the tripod. This is the base plate where you mount the camera. A phone holder, so you can see what you're recording, which is pretty cool. This is the main uh, battery or the grip of the camera. And also a handle where you can use the camera as a suitcase mode, which is awesome too. It's, it actually makes it even lighter. All right, on the, on the other side of the case, you're gonna find a bunch of different accessories like the full focus motor, an attachment for your lens so you can grip the full focus motor, um, a base plate to attach the camera and also to put together the full focus motor. And on the other side, you're gonna find the Revenite, which is a wireless video transmitter that, where you can transmit to your phone and to multiple phones so you can clients can watch what you're seeing. A bunch of different uh, screws and, and tools, and that's pretty much it. All right, on the other side of the case, we're gonna find the actual running ace, the main body of the gimbal. And on the top, on the top case, you're gonna find a bunch of cables, which are type C cables, uh, USB cables and HDMI cables where you can connect it to your camera and have more control of it. All right, let's put it together. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is connect the tripod to the camera grid or the battery of the camera. And then we're gonna attach it to the main body of the running ass. We're gonna take off all these um, covers that come with it to protect the running ass. And you have to make sure you put it this way, just follow this video. <laughs> Not sure what I'm explaining. You open, unlock first, and then once you're there, you lock it. This new DJI uh, has locks on every single axle, which is pretty cool. It makes it easier to mount the camera and set it up. Cool, so I'm gonna attach the base plate the camera. Just remember to follow the video and put it this way, the, bait, the main base in. And once you're in there, you can control the adjustment by twisting the nut on the, on the right side, left and right, which is pretty cool. And this is the plate that goes on the camera and you touch the camera there and you slide the camera in there. Cool. And as you can see, the axles is very, uh, very flexible and easy to adjust. I like the feel and the touch of the gimbal. All right, so we have a three different slot on the left side of the running ends, which those are used for powering and also to connect the camera to the running ends. At the bottom of the of the running ends, you can attach the uh, Revenai, which is a wireless video transmitter it also has a cold shoe adapter that you can attach it to the bottom and by just placing it there and snap it in and and also you can adjust the antennas as you wish once you balance the camera all right so we're gonna power the remnant on the bottom on the back of the unit and then we're gonna connect the running to the first slot of the left side of the of the running RS2. And on the other side of the of the revenue, you have an HDMI and an RS connection. Cool, so we are set on this part. 
Now we're gonna connect this handle, which can be used as a suitcase mode, which is uh, pretty awesome. Uh, it basically makes the camera even lighter when you're filming like a uh, lower um, shots. And you can attach a tripod to the end of the this handle so you can have more control of it. That one, since I have another running S, I'm gonna use that one. So you can see how it goes. And you can also purchase one separately and you have another one so that way you don't have to detach it and go even faster. So basically that's, this is the way it looks. And as you can see, I'm charging the, the running S because it's brand new, it has no charge. Cool, so moving on, I'm gonna attach the phone holder which can be used along with the Raven A whenever you're transmitting video to the phone. And that's by using the application from running S. And then we're gonna attach the base plate. This time I actually made an adjustment. As you can see, it's different from the one that I showed in the, earlier. And the reason why is because um, I'm using the Sigma 18 to 35 lens, so it's, it's a little bit longer. If I were to use the tall uh, plate that I have on my hand and attach it to the to the follow focus that I touched on the front, it probably wouldn't it wouldn't reach. So that's why I'm uh, not using this play. I'm using the small the the flat one, and I moved all the components to the front because that's the only way I can reach to the to the lens. So when I had to use a smaller lens, I had to detach it and put it on the um, on the tall base adapter. Okay, let's place it in, in the plate holder, I guess, and then just remember to go this way, obviously, and slide him in, and then once you're in there, you can adjust me with the wheel on the left, on the right side of the uh, the picture right now, and make the necessary adjustment, depending on the camera you're using. All right, so now I'm gonna connect the uh, full focus motor and for that, I'm gonna use a type C connector that is in the case. And from there, I'm gonna use, and from there, I'm gonna use the second slot on the left side of the running S arm, which will power it, and we'll be set to go. All right, up next, I'm gonna mount the camera. As you can see, it has this small plate, and I'm gonna slide it in. And also I have attached an HDMI cable to the revenue on the bottom, which I'll attach later. And then you're gonna lock it in the back to make sure, and then you're gonna balance it, balance it out as needed. And also I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna make sure the follow focus is in the right place with, is aligned with the lens. And I'm gonna connect the HDMI cable that comes from the Ribbon to the Blackmagic camera. There's multiple cables depending on your camera, you can choose, which is amazing. You don't have to spend any more uh, money on cables. And then I'm just gonna balance it out accordingly, you know, and as you can see, it works perfectly with the case. I don't make a uh, few adjustments, that's what I'm cutting the picture here and there until I make it work. And even when you slide into the right side to tilt, it won't tilt, which is amazing. So it can be done, so I mean, cool. With the cage and without the cage. Okay, so here's the menu, it's pretty much like a touch screen and I'm gonna show you how to navigate through it. It has multiple functions, um, for, you can scroll left, right or up and down or touch the front, uh, the mode that you want. In this case, it has multiple modes, follow modes, FTP mode, FVB mode, 3D, 360 mode, and also a, a portrait mode. And that means, uh, but that needs, for that you need a, a different adapters. That's, that's why the running is, is turning because it's thinking that you're gonna do a portrait mode. Anyway, so you can go back just by clicking on the left arrow on the top, and then you can scroll to the, uh, to the left, I mean, uh, just select what you want, like follow speed, for instance, or if you go balance, it will show all the different uh, dials that you have. And if you go here, it's pretty much you can start a calibration on the spot and they can make any adjustment, just such as stiffening or uh, what is it called, smoothing. And if you click in there, you can go just go plus and minus and adjust as needed or and so on. 
if you uh, slide to the left, you're gonna see multiple options like timelines, panorama, you know, dolly zoom, 3D focus, and track, you know. And if you scroll up to the to the right, uh, there's also another one, and if you can scroll down and you can find a bunch of different options that probably will suit your needs, you know. And you name it, you know. Okay, if you go back to the main menu and then you slide down, there's even more features or more menus that you can use or adjust. In this case, there's adjusting speed that you can adjust either fast, you know, small or medium, or even custom. Joystick smooth, same thing, it's just everything keep it low. Dial speed, 50, not sure to be honest exactly. Dial functions, and here's the really important because if you can see it has like the full, uh, the focus motor and that's, I control the mod, uh, the follow focus. If you don't select this action, you won't be able to control. But there's also different options to control like focus zoom, ISO, aperture, and roll. That's uh, depends on what camera you're using, all these features will be available to you. In my case, I'm using the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Cam 4K. Now I can record by pressing the red button on the adjusting instead of pressing on the camera. And just as the previous version, um, the original running S, it has three different modes. On mode one, I use it usually for my slow shots, so it goes still up and down very slowly. On M2, I use a 360 degree angle. And that's why the camera turns facing up, so that way it can turn around. And on mode three is my fast mode, so that way I can just move everything really fast. All right, guys, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please uh, put a thumbs up on my channel if you like this video. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you next one. Bye-bye.